She does want to talk about those things. Hmm. Let's see. <clears throat> Did you get to go to the name day ceremony? Oh my god. Oh my god. Why are we rolling? <laughs> That's for you. Um, <laughs> No, I don't go out much these days. I like to stay in and crochet. Mm. I see. She, she points back and there is like um, like crocheting needles that are like floating, but like doing it all on their own. Um, <gasps> just in the back next God, to her like armchair. <clears throat> It's easier when you're, you know, smart. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, my God. Will be throwing fucking... oh, my God. <clears throat> Can I get you any food? I've got um, some cucumber sandwiches. What the? <laughs> I'll take whatever you've got. Weird okay. Food. I'll bring it out. Do you eat cucumber sandwiches, socks? Is that like normal? Or is that nope. like. Nope. <laughs> 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 right. We have to be careful. This man is going to determine how all of us die. So let's, let's, oh. let's, let's cut us a slack, please. <laughs> All right. She eventually comes back um, with some cucumber sandwiches and some like a, a pot of soup. Um, it smells really good. Um, it seems to be like some like chicken uh, and vegetable soup uh, um, with some bowls and cutlery and stuff. And she kind of just leaves you to it and goes back to like a small sitting room um, on her own. And she kind of kind of leaves you to your privacy. Okay. Pip wouldn't be detecting anything crazy going on, right? With the soup. Nope. Just making nope. sure. Nothing, okay. nothing All right. crazy. Alright. Okay. Just making sure. You never know. Mistrusting of literally everything. Every hey. Um, Bam. Alright. Pip is going to eat and then um, what? I don't know how many rooms there are in I'm the house, but if, if space is fairly limited... Uh, Pip is going to uh, sleep on like a couch or, or something. Yeah, it's mainly it's mainly just the couch. Um, there is a, a spare bedroom that someone can take that she kind of sets you all up in. So there's a spare bedroom and she kind of brings out like quilts and blankets, but she doesn't have too much. Most of you are just left with like blankets and the couches. Um, but you do all have a comfortable space to sleep tonight. <clears throat> okay, do Pip goes sleep. Soup. All right. Section also eat then sleep. Okay. All right. Is this a long rest? Yes, do you I will smell be. Soup? You, I mean, do you do you have is just get people have issues smelling things? I. You actually, hyper focus yes, on the weirdest shit. Because I like role playing. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he ben, smells don't forget. mint and clovers all day. You are going to get murdered in your sleep by this old lady for taking yeah, this old lady. I don't think I can sleep here. That's shit. a problem. That's. <laughs> Wait, did you hear that? Or were you too far away? No, I didn't hear that. He didn't hear that. I'm rolling oh. to see if he smells the soup. Yes, he can smell the soup. It smells very nice. So. He does not eat the soup. <laughs> what about the cucumber sandwich? <laughs> I actually have a question. No straws. Would Gabriel be uncomfortable in this home for existential reasons? Um, I don't think so. No, not particularly. No? Okay. It's very comfortable. I, I thought am, you were so. about to ask something random like, how thick were the cucumbers cut or something? How did he bleed when I killed him? No. <laughs> so what uh, about the picture was charmed? I don't understand. Well, it was like... I would uh, my perception of it animated guys. <laughs> well, my my perception of it was like similar to like one of those things that we ran into before where it was like always making eye contact despite the fact that like we were moving. 
type deal? Is that oh. how it was supposed to be? Sung? It was just yeah. It was just like it was just like memory. No, no. To to explain okay. a bit in, in a bit more detail, it was just like, um, it was just like a. Okay, I'm gonna explain it in modern day terms, but Thank I God. hate that I'm doing this. Um, it's just like uh like a two second gif is is being put in a in a oh. photo frame. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should have just said to begin okay. with. Gotcha. It's just like a That's, moment uh, captured. So it. it's just animated. Yeah. Okay. It's animated. Yeah. Is it, okay. Is it like the Harry Potter like news? Shut up, Ziggy. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's See, how, that's how I, was I was sitting here it. thinking yeah. that it was enchanted because it was like a false memory. Uh, well, I'm glad we cleared that up. But... Okay. Don't you. say fucking Jeff. <laughs> Also, what you said it was magical. What is is there like a school of magic associated with school of magic? Would be <laughs> would be illusion. Okay. A school of magic related to gifs. It's a fucking. It's a picture. Ain't no way. Who just said gif? Okay, uh, so as oh, you man. all hit your, it is this very cozy um place, um as the yes. evening comes to you uh and and you get your rest um i lock my door okay um I wanted, go, I, i'm sorry I'm scared of you yeah, um, the fuck up go ahead and uh everyone just make me a um oh no, please no stop i would just like a, <laughs> a, a wisdom saving throw from you all murder oh. myself. wow that's crazy <laughs> Stop. Stop, socks. Wait, please. so do we just click wisdom and it'll wisdom do it? Wisdom and then saving throw, yeah. yeah socks, yeah. please. Oh, so uh, fuck Before my life, this. bro. Oh. Wait, wisdom. Thank God, I am super wise. Where is the saving? Bro? If you click wisdom, then oh, another pop up will pop up. Yeah. Oh, music change. Nice. Super fuck wise. Fuck you. Hip. Hip figures. <sighs> Pip and Zach's Mulligan, yo, can I, can I, can I lucky? <laughs> Did you say Mulligan? Lu yeah, lucky. Can I re-roll? I'm scared. I mean, I'm you, scared. You do it's have lucky. Oh no. Oh, do you want to use it? It's Chuck's up to you. Yeah. So. Zach is um, having a bad night. Yes, yes. I'm. I will use one of my three lucky You're things. You're throwing lucky dice. Yeah. Okay, go for it. I mean, fuck you. Oh. He said, I am about to get caught again. lacking, oh, bruh. <laughs> I don't know. Chuck's throwing 17 still. I hope you fucking roll low Are again. Are you kidding? Bitch! <laughs> you have more. You have more. No, you can only use it once. So. Oh, 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 damn. It's better than... I get to choose which of the two. I doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's fuck. Okay. Uh, Pip and Zaxxon, uh, as the rest of the party... Sleep peacefully. Um, dreams become you. Nightmares. Oh. Oh. Welcome As to my world. That's me every night. Infernal whispers begin to seep through. Whatever dreams you are having, faces begin to contort. If Pip, you're dreaming of home, the faces of your friends and family begin to twist into that of devils, and you see Casimir's face pop up, and whispers from the depths of the nine hells begin to pierce your mind. Mm. Zaxon, you walk the halls of the monastery. On that fateful night, whispers coming from the darkness, whispering to you in an infernal, your mother's voice talking to you in infernal, questioning everything you've done up to this point. You see devilish Monk figures crossing Christ. in the shadows in front of you. You see red glowing lights from the doors on each side, and you try and open them, but they're locked. 
whatever you do to try and punch them down you can't get through you hear screams of monks your fellow people just like screaming on the other side and you can't open the doors and there's nothing you can do and all you see on the other end of the corridor is Casimir laughing at you you both take uh, three points of psychic damage um, when you wake up in the morning so this is the new day starts so take a long rest and then Take three points off. Um, and then, Pip, roll me a d10. And Zaxxon, roll me a d10. Fuck. Okay. The morning comes to. Your heads hurt from lack of sleep and the mental anguish that you've just experienced eight hours of a repeated hellish nightmare mm. um and the rest of the party wakes up and you begin to kind of conjure yourselves awake um and now um, mm -hmm. you look at Zaxxon in horror as you notice the leathery wings that have sprouted from his back. Curses in Elvish? Chuck, you look over at Pip, whose blonde hair rests on his pillow as he sits up. Bald. His hair no longer resting on his head. And what about his mustache? <laughs> his mustache is still there. Okay. Oh god, so he's he's extra ugly. Okay. And then where his hair once was, these tiny bone-like spikes over his head. Oh that have pierced no. out of his skull. Thank you. Thank you for rolling high. Thank you for rolling high. Thank you for rolling high. Holy shit. Oh. That's not good. That's not and good. And Saxon, as you kind of, as Eden looks at you, your, your eyes close and you get a flashback to that dream you had. And one memory of the dream keeps coming back to you is Casimir with the book open glowing and as you keep running towards him down the corridor all he's doing is like reading it and he keeps speaking infernal as you keep going towards him trying to stop him he just keeps reading it he's only on the first quarter of the book but you can feel it like mm. burning the back of your neck and nothing you can do can get you down that corridor. Nothing you can do can stop the screams in the side doors. And then your eyes open again. And that look of horror on Enna's face. And it pulls you back. What do you do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Just as she's looking at me, I'm going to like look down and scan over myself to see what may be the issue. Do I, do I realize that I have wings at this point? Um, I'd say like looking around, uh, you do look back and you see these black, like leathery wings, like falling. Because you can't move them. They're non-functional. Mm. They're just like 
there, just resting mm. down behind you. Mm. So yeah, you you're aware. I'm just gonna sort of. Uh, I'm I, as shocked as uh, Anna is. I'm gonna like try to reckon with it and like move like into another room to collect myself confused and scared I'm gonna follow I'm sort of just like Touching them, sort of, maybe even like uh, pulling to see if they're if it's real, if they're attached. Um, yep, you can feel like you can when you touch mm -hmm. them and like they're part of you. Like there's nerve endings, you can feel Oof. them. They're not big, like they're right. not massive. Yet. Mm. They're newly grown. Mm. Uh, Sorry, don't mind me. Okay. Um, as I'm following him, I'm at a distance, I'm just going to softly ask what happened. I'm going to turn my head quickly and shoot my eyes that are just yeah, it was these nightmares. Casimir, that, that cursed book. This is his doing, surely. I did not sleep much at all, and, and now this is turning properly short of the wings. And then I'm going to dart out to the others, asking if anybody else had nightmares. Uh, it's going to nod, but not say much. How far away is Chuck from Pip? You're in a small house, not far. Chuck's gonna just walk over to, I guess, Pip's pillow is what he was sleeping on. Mm -hmm. And he's just gonna take two fingers and just kind of pick his hair up, look at it, and let go and watch it drop. Two pay. I did think oh. about putting it on Chuck's head, but. I opted not to. <laughs> not to pay this Pip. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Pip's gonna look back at the hair he didn't even know he was missing. Oh. And like rub his eyes because he's still, you know. Still waking up. Waking up crusties. after after, you know, a terrible night of sleep. I'm gonna walk back in the room sort of like grabbing the doorway looking around to see like if anybody else has his shit going on with them and seeing pip just give the run to his horns it is it noticeable that saxon has wings to, to pip uh yeah, it's like pretty pretty noticeable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait, I have horns. Oh. I'm gonna turn to him and show him my wings. And I yep. pass. You had him too. Pip, you touch the top of your head, and it's like touching like a, almost like touching like a porcupine or a hedgehog. <gasps> There's just like. Dozens of small spikes coming out of your skull that have come out and pierced your skin. Oh, hell no. They turn him into Pinhead. No. 
Oh, now, I don't know. I don't know if this has any significance, but like, we're looking for Black Thorn, and the dead dude from that picture, last name Black. I don't know. Something sus. Who, it, <laughs> what if it was them? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. This is this is fucked. This is exactly. fucked. Now Pip I matches mean... the OG Squeak. This Eager is exactly horns. what Enna was afraid of, was that we were going to start turning into something infernal. I'm gonna uh, put on the the robe of useful items that cover, like tuck and cover the wings, mm -hmm. and yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna like knock on the the old woman's door, sort of hurriedly. Ooh, yeah, like a, a short like surprise a bit of shuffling and like a minute later she opens the door yes i'm just gonna sort of peer in sort of trying to keep his composure but sort of worriedly asking like when when normally could we expect your boy to be here um she kind of looks outside and it's like um you know sunrise uh, you if he said he'll be here in the morning, he'll be here in the morning. He's a reliable lad. He's going to sort of like have a half-cocked smile with his eyes wide. He's like, right, right. And I'll shuffle back off into the uh, main living room. I'll just get ready and I'll bring out some tea. Mm. Pip is going to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, Pip is going to uh, re-equip his Helm of Comprehending Languages. You know, the okay. one that was originally too big and then shrunk yeah. and fit to, you know, like, because that... <laughs> I don't know what else to do. No, bless. If we go out there looking like this, looking like devils, I'm not sure we'd be allowed here. Not after what happened. We have to get these marks off of our necks. Wait, do, we... do I still have it? Pip's gonna sort of, you know, turn around and expose that area where it was. I mean, it is invisible, so it's hard to tell. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're Fuck. invisible again. Hmm. Chuck is going to, like, curiously rub his own neck slowly, sort of just out of mm -hmm. concern. As you do so, there's a knock on the door. It's just me. You hear Frederick's voice. I'm just you know, staring at him. My eyes are, like, uh, wide, sort of, like, uh, just really worried about, you know, uh, his reaction to it. He's, I'm still just covered in the cloak, but. He, uh, he comes in. <clears throat> uh, as he kind of looks around. Uh, as, is my mom all right? Is she uh, up yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's fine. She's uh, working on getting some, some breakfast together. Mm. All right. Uh, okay. Um. Well, you look a bit startled to see me, or is that all right? We have a little bit of a problem. Kind of shuts the door. <laughs> okay. Pip. Show him. I'm going to remove the, uh, the helmet briefly and show off the thorns or spikes or whatever it is they are his hand he's like the fact that he's bald <laughs> yeah his hand instinctually kind of moves down towards his his scabbard but he doesn't do anything you didn't look like that yesterday um right okay that's um 
It's Casimir. As she says that, I'm going to sort of step forward a little. Me and the small one. We had nightmares last night. Casimir was in mine. And I woke up this morning and I'll sort of toss the robe off my shoulders and turn. And I woke up with these. His eyes go wide. Well, it seems we're on a time clock now. Respectfully, what the fuck are you guys into? What what is that? Where? It's Ooh. the book that he took. But why? Why you? Why only you two? And why not any? <sighs> I haven't heard about this happening to anybody else in this city. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, I but that. I did. <clears throat> I, I did open the book. And Casimir and cut it... me. Mm. Right. Kind of nods, like not thinking too much on it. Um. Mm. And he kind of sits down, thinking. Eventually, his 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 mom comes out and starts doing some tea. Uh, and he kind of goes into the kitchen for a minute, and he just he just says, "I'll, I'll be back in a minute." Um. At which point you hear, um, in kind of all of your heads, kind of separately, is like, "Hello, ah, oh, God, now we're gonna fucking find these fucking people." Hello, anybody? Yeah. Oh, it's our homie. Yes. Valgro. Yeah. Put the robe back on. And... Dragon net. This is in your head. Mm -hmm. What are you? Uh, I've been fucking looking for you all fucking morning. Where are you? Um, it'll, it'll be better if we come out to you. Are you in the street? I am in I Street. Uh, I don't know. There's a bunch of fucking owls. Uh, uh, I and there's I, I don't know. I don't know where I am. I can. I'm near the. Well, I kind of know where I am. I think I'm near the alley. I'm gonna sort of walk out uh, hastily and throw the hood uh, of the robe over the top of my head and sort of just really keep it closed tight and walk outside just leaving toward the gallery. Uh He's he's pretty close because he, he's only using a counter up here to try and find you guys. Um, but he, you do actually spot him with his little blue fares. Um, so you do spot him. He doesn't spot you yet. but he, So you managed to I'm catch gonna... up to him. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to him, put my hand on his shoulder and say, you need to come with me and quickly. He kind of nods and just follows along. I'm going to bring him back to uh, Frederick's mother's house. Okay. He kind of comes inside. He kind of makes his introduction. Hello, I'm Belgro. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, sorry for intruding. I'm a good friend of these, I think. Uh, what's going on? I'm gonna... Pip takes okay. off his helmet again. Shit. Shit. That's bad. Eh? What the fuck happened? Eh? <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just unlucky. Yeah, I get unlucky sometimes and I lose some fucking money. I don't grow horns on me head. Cool. Well. Um. He starts casting a small incantation, um, pulls a mono, um, a monocle up to his eye. Um, his eyes flash blue for a second, and he starts looking over you, Pip, and and feeling the horns on your head. No, these are, yeah, these are fucking, yeah, these are natural and they're real. That's when did these happen? And he's just like walking around last you and, night like, to this morning. <laughs> Okay. Um, anything else you've noticed? Uh, I had um, nightmares. Nightmares. About Casimir's book. 
Uh, okay, uh, fill me in quickly, everything quickly. But this doesn't sound Do like we've got a lot of time. you want to actually give the rundown? Or can no, we you, just can, like you say, can just tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sit down. We got a lot to unpack. <laughs> okay. Uh, three cups of teas later, we flash forward to um, the rundown being complete. Right. Uh, okay. He pulls open, he twists open a flask um, and starts having a swig. Okay. Um, so, what? She's... So, Kazimir has the book. That's bad. That's really bad. Um, but you did well. You did fucking fantastic. Because um, we know more than we did before. And that's that's good. Uh, but clearly, you're on a time. You're on a time crunch. Uh, if that's happened to you two, are these two filled in? Uh, and he kind of looks at Frederick and his mother. Uh, the boy, not the old woman the mother doesn't know anything he has a vague idea of what is happening but he's not familiar with magic so right um he kind of looks at the he looks at pretty like maybe it's best uh your mother not it is it's um dangerous business you know and he kind of looks a little bit like not offended, but just taken aback, and then he kind of agrees, and then kind of uh, brings his mother to the sitting room, and <clears throat> then Frederick comes back in. Right. Uh, so if he has the book and he's clearly started using it, um, it's either he's using it to change you, or using it is changing you. Either way. He's starting to use that book. And Pip, you said that when you used it, it was... It wasn't easy. Or try to read it. It was... It was terrifying. Yeah. But, uh... He said Casimir's been here a long time, so... But if he's been here a long time... That means he's been looking for... God, well, he's been looking for this place, or he's been looking for anything for a long time, and he hasn't been able to find it. And then... Hmm. Okay. Right, first of all, while I'm here, do you need anything? Is there anything you need me to do while I'm here right now, before we get moving? Can you get these fucking runes off our backs? <laughs> No, I can't do that. <sighs> he kind of looks at the spinning thing around your head, Zaxon. That's unique. Where'd you get that from? Casimir's library, his office. He kind of pulls out a small pearl out of his pocket. Um, cat, like whispers a spell. Um, does a somatic component, and the pearl just kind of like, uh, almost like evaporates, but like turns into dust. And he kind of uses the pearl dust, um, and like wraps it around the stone that's going around your head, uh, and then uses the monocle, and it kind of shimmers slightly. Ah, Nayun stone, very interesting. And he kind of pulls it back. But pulls the dust back. <clears throat> Rare those things. Yeah, don't find them far from these places. <clears throat> yeah. No shield though. Alright, uh, are we sure nobody needs anything? <clears throat> uh... Direction. Direction, right. But... Oh. We were considering going and talking to Blackthorn to see if he was charmed or not. Is there anything that you know that you can tell us about him? I mean, most of my trips here have been academic. Um, don't really run into the guards much. So, uh, never really 
had a need to know much or speak to this black form fella um no i'll be honest uh, i don't really know what you do about that um and to speak quite plainly and he kind of looks up at um francis uh he kind of looks up um and he says sorry not francis frederick <clears throat> he kind of looks up is it just be quite plainly um as much as this place is special um balinor is not at the top of my priority list um and i don't know whether it should be yours either he points at Pip's head and he points at Zaxxon's wings. I'm not telling you not to handle that Blackthorn situation. But if you are going to handle it, you're going to make it quick. Because what Chasm is doing could end up bad. Not only for you, Bive, but for the rest of the old fucking Anki. So, one city's problems from one guard or head of the guards is a very, very small problem to deal with right now. I mean, our whole reason to be here was to try and get rid of these things off of our necks. That's very clearly the conduit that he's using to change us. And the librarians weren't able to help us find anything. I, I have no idea where to go next. I don't know what to do. Unless Belgro here can tell us where Casimir may have gone. Our only lead is this black thorn, and either he tells us or I will beat it out of him. Or he kills us all. Hmm. There is an option. Um, <clears throat> there is an option. We have a... He looks at Frederick. We have a Dedalian safe house here in Balinor. that has the capability to scry. Oh. Now, to do so, um, would be useful, uh, obviously. Um, But how much we, you know, you can scry on somebody and they could be sat on the fucking shitter, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a shot in the dark, but we could get something. And you <laughs> want to try and scry Blackthorn? I was more thinking Kazumi. And you think scrying a cambion that has the power to change us into devils is a good idea? I think we need to know what he's up to. Then I what to do next. And if you, if, is there any chance you have anything of his? Because that would make it easier. Any of his belongings might be a picture or a likeness even i'm reaching here maybe a a, a, pe a bit of hair or anything or a wand i'm sorry sorry mm. a wand you've got a wand of casimir no no no, no. that was no, a character no. that would be very useful <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna turn to Z zaxon and just what about? But then not actually say anything, hoping 
that Zaxxon would understand, you know, the, the reference to the thing taken from Casimir's place. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up the shield and sort of uh, grab the stone. Both of these came from his office. This stone in particular was in a bag of his, along with some writings, sort of uh, uh, documenting his time there at the at Balanor. That's gonna make the spell a hell of a lot more successful. Okay. Well, listen, I'm only here to help. I'm not here to tell you what to do. So, it's up to you. Let's do it. Do you want to deal with the it Blackthorn goes. problem, or do you want to come to the Dedalian safe house? I think the safe house. The closer we get to Casimir, the better. I see. We have to get to him before he changes us all. He kind of looks around at the rest of the party to see no. how they're feeling. Chuck nods as well. Don't <laughs> worry. I got you. Hey, first. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Gabriel Thanks isn't so much. there. Oh, Gabriel's still in his room? Okay. Yeah. But we can handle that later. Where is Bird Boy? He's busy. I'm gonna wait, I, 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 wait. <laughs> Why am I answering? It's crazy. Uh, I'm going to turn to Frederick. Your Lord Blackthorn. This is still an issue, but you should speak to some of your cohorts, people who work under him. See if anybody else has noticed this strange behavior. Most of them seem like incompetent buffoons, but surely uh, you can piece together together some things. I'll see what I can do. I understand, and I'm not going to hold it against you. You're clearly in a much more precarious position than than I am. So. Thank you for understanding. Mm. Of course. <clears throat> You've uh, done this city a service, so thank you. Hmm. I'm gonna sort of oh, also, pick. I'm going to pull out my spare whistle and give it back to Balk. That is very much appreciated. Thank you. I uh, <laughs> have to hit your ride from a Goliath penny guard. <laughs> they fucking stunk. So uh, thanks for that. <clears throat> Right, uh, let's be off. Where's uh, where's your mate? Did you lose somebody? <sighs> I think he's still sleeping. Does somebody want to go wake him up? I'm gonna take Chuck with me to go and knock on Gabriel's door. Okay. Can I chime in? So. During this entire conversation, Gabriel's been casting the spell, ritual spell, Augury. Okay. He, I already, I, um, basically he was outlaying, I don't know how else to put it, but he has like a mini Bunsen burner. Sure. Over like a potion. And he's like just dropping random things in. And he's super stressed out. He has no mask, no, no hat or anything. He's just in like his skivvies. He's dropping things in. And this is going to be like a DM question, but I'd like to ask a vague question. Okay. Once the spell takes effect and... So once the, the potion turns like a clear, you would just stare at this potion and be like, am I speaking to the Raven Queen? Hmm. Okay. So the way this spell works, mm -hmm. first of all, when you went shopping yesterday to get these materials, mark off 25 gold pieces. Sure. 
Um, <laughs> that is the cost of the spy. But yeah, 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 I got you. Three, um, oh, what? It's a vague question, but I also give you a vague answer because I either give you wheel for good results, woe for mm. bad results, wheel and woe for good and bad, or nothing. So your question this has taken was more than more than one minute as a ritual. It's been taking that entire conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah. So your question was, am I talking to the Raven Queen? Um, That's not a course of action. Specifically. Mm -hmm. like maybe, um, phrase, maybe. So you don't get anything at first. Um, okay. so maybe that's why the ritual's taken so long. So you, you can rephrase the question. I'd say after a few minutes, it drops a few more things and just random bits and bobs that he knows that could activate, goes clear again. Is, is my path the Raven Queen's doing? There is, within the potion, <clears throat> you look deep within it, and uh, within the mix of all these different ingredients, it changes color from browns to greens to reds. But after you ask that question, it bubbles over for a second, and... Um, there are specific chemicals that do this um and it happens here too but in an instant the potion turns black mm. that you but you take that um either for good or bad because actually I say it just turns black at first and then like from the center of that um mm. ocean there's just like a small um kind of twirling uh like small twirling piece of like white um liquid that kind of just makes its own way <clears throat> around the potion and it kind of makes its path to the surface. And I'm, so this, the answer of OOC is wheel and whoa. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Knock right. on door. Yep, you get a knock on the door. Give me a minute. He starts kicking his butts and burners. <laughs> He's just... Chuck's just gonna look at fucking Zaxxon. All right. Eventually, uh, Gabriel comes out. I assume mm -hmm. fully dressed. Up. Yes. God, I hope Hello. so. Um, you rang. Gabriel Belgros here, and there are things that you missed. Mm. Um, guide him into the living room and sort of just go over everything and okay. you know, show him catch us up yeah all right so you are filled in uh and then bell kind of stands up and uh we should probably get going uh no time to waste um and he kind of shuffles you all out in the meantime he kind of reaches into uh his coat pocket his blue coat pocket and pulls that scroll um undoes it uh, begins reading it um, and he looks over at Frederick uh, Frederick I hope you understand uh, what very important business and he finishes the spell waves a hand over uh, Frederick's eyes and his eyes go cloudy for a second uh, <clears throat> and he puts the scroll away <clears throat> all right let's get going uh I'm gonna follow him but sort of look at Frederick to see if he's like okay. 
He kind of rubs his eyes for a second. Uh, oh. Zuckerman, so, what's um? Who was who was that guy? He's a friend of ours. I thank you for your hospitality, Frederick. We will be back. Was he? Soon. Was he in here? <laughs> oh, Shit. Only, only briefly. Uh, he, he, we were intending on visiting him anyway. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. We'll uh, be in touch. Okay. Of course. Okay. Good luck. May the gods be with you, mate. God. I'm gonna follow Bulgar. All right. Uh, he leads you all off through the city. Um, many people getting on with their days. Uh, he leads you uh, back towards like the fog market, um, down a small alleyway into kind of a crooked uh like alleyway district um with lots of different levels like going up and down steps um very much like um not a slum uh but just lots of, lots of like uh buildings very close together and he pulls you down to a um very small little building like right on the edge of an alleyway that's like a little sliver of a place um and he knocks on the door um and it's like a like a wooden door but he knocks on it and it sounds metal um and he knocks on the door and uh, let me just change the music real quick because <clears throat> i've been listening to this film way too long no i've just been listening <laughs> to that music for way too long because uh, you're in a city now <clears throat> um and he knocks on the door and uh it open like uh, a little sliding hatch opens in this wooden door that shouldn't really be there and you see this big like head uh it's large head of like a humanoid that's like um green uh like a green skin but like it's opalescent like kind of shining um these cloudy white eyes uh peer through and you hear a voice from through belgro is that you he's like what do you open up in the fucking door dog and the door kind of opens and um you step in and bear in mind this door is like on the edge of the alleyway so if the alleyway's like in front of you the door's like directly next to the alleyway but you step into this doorway and where the alleyway should be is a room uh like you step into an extra dimensional space um this it's bigger on the inside um there is like a you step into like a lobby of like a much bigger building than should be here um and as you kind of like a shoved in by belgro off the streets uh no one gives you any notice and uh, there seems to be some kind of magic here something people from looking uh and the door is shut behind you and then you see the person that's let you in um that is about a 10 foot tall um humanoid man um that is like i said green skin and it's shining like ever so sh slightly um almost like it's reflecting sunlight but there's not a lot of sunlight in here um like eyes that are clouded over uh bald head uh completely shirtless uh but ripped like to fuck um <laughs> wearing like beautiful like um gold bangles um and rings um and then you notice the massive white feathered wings on their back um oh. this is a well you don't know exactly what this is but this is some kind of angel um that you've just walked into um, mm. that is stood here, um, yeah. but is wearing, um, a chef's apron, um, oh. that is kind of tied around, uh, their waist. Um, they've got some, like, tunic around their waist as well. Um, well, well howdy, Belgro. I didn't expect to see oh. you here today. Um, well, you brought some friends along? Uh, 
and he kind of looks around. Well, these are some nice looking uh, chaps and chapettes. Um, well, are you fellas and uh, lady, you, you hungry? I've been making up some scrambled eggs. So if uh, if you would fancy some, I could I could do you all some scrambled eggs if you like. And Balco just is face palming right now, and he's like, <laughs> Doug. We've told you this. You're supposed to be the fucking guardian of a safe house in Ballinor. You're not supposed to offer anybody fucking scrambled eggs. Well, I feel safe. <laughs> he gives you, like, the evil eye. Oh, my God. Right, so I'm gonna... nobody wants scrambled eggs, then. <laughs> Do you have straws? Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we got some straws. <gasps> well, if you yeah. can, never mind. Well, what you doing we here? What you all doing here? How, how can we help? We need to find a way out. At least Valgroy here says that there's a place that we could scry if needed oh you need you okay uh i suppose not just here for a friendly friendly visit then bell girl oh. you know i've been working on these scrambled eggs for uh better half of a century now oh my God. So i'm really trying to perfect these I've, I've been really trying to perfect these and you know bell girl always comes by but he never wants to try them Eggs. I'm gonna, as you're saying, I'm gonna like sort of keep facing forward, but like shoot my eyes down towards you and whisper. Oh, fucking, I don't want them. Chuck, fucking eat them. Chuck, you eat the eggs. Chuck's gonna look over and just walk up to the <laughs> eggs. No questions asked. He takes a fry. He takes. <laughs> he takes the frying pan. And he takes like a, a massive like spoon that he's got that's like really normal in his hand. <laughs> And he takes a big spoon of eggs. Come on, g give it a try. It, it tastes real good. I got some spices in there. Yeah, eat Chuck. those eggs, Chuck. No hesitation. Chuck's just gonna fucking eat it. <laughs> mm. They're that, that really good eggs. <laughs> Huh. Chuck's just gonna have the eggs in his mouth, but he, like he's visibly not chewing. He's just looking at this guy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You hate him. You hate him. And he like throws the frying pan at the wall. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> he pissed off the angel. Ducks don't oh, fucking ruin the fuck. eggs again. And there's like an ex <laughs> there's like a there's like a radiant explosion where the frying pan hits the wall. <laughs> I fucking hate Frick <laughs> ah, This frick. man's just trying to have a life man This man's uh, just trying to live Well Bell Grow I best send you away you fuck Frick Frick I can't freaking <laughs> Okay well you know where to go Bell Grow it's nice to see you again <laughs> Chuck's gonna just start slowly Chewing as he walks Ooh. away <laughs> This guy just goes and sits in like this massive armchair by the fire and starts sulking. <laughs> Nobody likes his haze. <laughs> uh, oh, and Belgro like leads you off through this um, kind of like a stone built, um, <laughs> like uh, very much similar to the anywhere the basement in Otho's place. It's very well built, very well like defended. As Belgro goes through. He has to like disable some defenses uh, and then re enables them as you go through like magical defenses. Um, and eventually leads you into this like dark room off to the side that's dimly lit by some ever burning candles um, and some ever burning torches. Um, but what you notice is there is this dripping sound as you come down the stone stairs. And as you get down to the bottom, um, there is um, <clears throat> this blood um, all 
liquid um but it's like got the consistency of blood it's like thicker um that's dripping up into the ceiling 